My name is Tony DeFalco. I'm the Vice President of International Services at BDS, and I run our international ops, uh, serving our fellow vets around the world. And uh, this is Dr. Bill Daphnis, and we're going to introduce ourselves more here in a second. Uh, we want to get started and uh, do an overview, really, to start uh, the compensation and the contracted compensation and pension exam process. And once, once we're done talking, uh, we're going to get into Q&A, which I think will be really helpful and give you all a chance to ask questions about that process as well. So we appreciate everybody coming. Uh, you know, those kind of like the standard government sl slides we learned about in the military here, you can see. Uh, we got uh, intros. Uh, we talked a little bit about our uh, new parent company, Maximus, and about Veterans Evaluation Services, the name you, you all probably know now for the last 14 years. Do a quick CMP overview, and then, like I said, a QA uh, session here. Okay, my name is Tony Falco, VP of International Ops. I'm also a proud of a life member of the BAV, and it's, it's good to be back uh, doing these again after the last couple of years, canceling them, uh, like the one in Tampa last year, it's much smaller than usual. So it's great to see everybody in person. It's great to be here uh, with you all again, um, just getting out there. Uh, it's been great meeting folks. Uh, I'll apologize up front. I'm a little jet lagged. I got in about 1 a.m. this morning. I was overseas from Bosnia. Then had to connect in Germany and things were delayed. And all the stuff you hear in the news about the flights and the chaos, it's true. <laughs> uh, so I can I give you a first hand account of that. Uh, but I'm highly caffeinated, and if I have a heart attack or something, the doc will help me out here. Um, but everybody, it's been great at going around the course, seeing everybody. Uh, we just, I, actually, there was at breakfast folks having a very intense conversation about which service had the coolest. Uh, former members and coolest, most famous members, and that's the kind of stuff that's really important. And obviously, it's Air Force because we have Billy Nelson and Jim Morris. That notwithstanding, um, no, he's half who plays with 70s technology, so it takes me a while on these slides here. But uh, we're going to talk about Maximus, uh, who's been around a long time and is uh, our proud uh, parent company now. Uh, they acquired VES in May of uh, 2021. Uh, they're the largest provider of government-sponsored benefit field programs in the U.S. And we've got over 40,000 employees around the world, uh, not to mention our over 2,000 at VES uh, now fall under the Maximus umbrella uh, to help serve our fellow veterans. And Maximus has brought a lot to the table for us. Um, expanded IT infrastructure, uh, call centers. Uh, we're going to be ramping up and rolling out a new web page. Uh, it's going to look a lot more modern uh, than the one we have now, uh, which is going to be great to help serve veterans, allow for better feedback from you all, immediate uh, contact. And it's, it's uh, brought a lot to the table for us to help expand our services to the veterans. With VES, we've been doing this since 2008. Um, we have literally helped hundreds of thousands of vets and service men and women receive uh, their hard-earned disability uh, benefits that they deserve. We have a global network of providers, which I talked about. Uh, it's not just in the U.S. You serve honorably. You get those benefits wherever you live. Um, it's a great challenge. I've enjoyed it. I've been running our international ops since the inception 12 years ago. Um, and it's amazing where some vets go and, and where we have to do exams, but it's uh, really fun. Uh, I just, I mean, we just did some x-rays and one in Tehran, for example. We just got some done in Baghdad. Uh, we've even got vets in Ukraine right now that we're keeping track of, and thankfully they're all safe. So we are literally around the world helping vets here. And uh, really, our sole bread and butter of is to conduct those MPEs, those medical disability evaluations and get those DDQ forms. You'll hear that a lot today, DDQ, disability questionnaires. For those of you that aren't familiar with that, and the doctor is much more of an expert on that than I am, and he's going to talk about that. And with that, I will introduce the doctor, because you want to hear him talk, not me. And uh, he can introduce himself and all the right slides. I don't know if they want to hear me talk about it. My name is Dr. Daphnis. I'm a family practitioner. I've been here at in Phoenix for Sorry about that. Uh, I am 
my name is Dr. Bill Lathmus. I'm a family physician in Phoenix, and I've been with the BES for just a little bit over nine years now. I tried to count them last night. I think I had about 7,000 of these DBQ cases. So I had a little experience doing some of these and really enjoyed it to the point that I actually sold my practice to do this more full time. It just came down to a matter of the way you, you get burned out in family medicine Sunday night, going to the clinic was always difficult, but going to see veterans was uh, the night before actually was was a better day. So I, I chose you know a better lifestyle and helping you guys out over my, my practice. Uh, you know, you, you miss a few things. We'll talk about the difference between a CMP exam and what I did as a family practitioner. A little bit of a continuity of care that sometimes we miss, but uh, uh, I'll be honest, uh, the way things have changed in life, getting thank yous from you guys, I don't get stuff like that in practice anymore. So thank you guys for all of that. So we'll go over what a compensation and pension exam is and how it's a little bit different than what I would do as a, like I said, as a family practitioner. And you might meet neurologists, psychiatrists, all the different kinds of physicians and uh, nurse practitioners, PAs, etc. Um, so our main goal, how I kind of translate this for veterans and for new people who are training, is that our job is to translate the information from what's going on in your medical file, what's going on with you, what you tell us is going on, to what the VA is looking for in their DBQs. So we're not treating, we're not there to prescribe medications, which is hard a little bit sometimes for new providers as well as uh, new veterans as well. Um, but we're there to translate and give the, give the VA a good picture of what's going on in front of us. So there are certain exams that we don't have to do a full exam. Again, there's a difference, right? Somebody comes into the office, you talk about having a heart attack, I'm not just going to go, okay, you said you're having a heart attack, <laughs> right? There's more to it, more testing. With these exams, we might not have a full exam, but the, the perfect example is someone who comes in and, come, and complains about reflux. We have a lot of reflux, right? We're going to go based on what's called the subjective history. So me discussing with you what the symptoms are, how the medication you took helped or didn't help, that's going to give us an idea of what's going on versus I'm not sticking a scope down your throat in the office. Um, as far as who's conducting the exam, um, all of us are, gonna, are trained. Uh, the VES recently, Maximus recently, we started up a new training program for our new providers, which has been kind of nice because we have a lot of uh, variants in how we do things. And the, the DBQs, the CMP exams, are a completely different language than what most of us are used to. So being able to kind of get everybody together on the same page has been very helpful. And uh, just to piggyback on that, uh, some questions that came in ahead of time, I can touch on one now. Uh, we get this a lot from veterans that, that call in, why can't I just go to my doctor down the street? Um, well, as the doctor said, we have to vet, train, do a background check. There's, there's all sorts of uh, hoops to jump through to get providers qualified to join our network. Um, there's a full background check. There can't be any sort of money or hits or anything of that nature. There's a robust training and DMA process that the VA runs that all the doctors have to go through. Then they go through another training with us at VES. So that's part of the reason why you can't just, for our exams, go down to any old doctor. Now we'd love to get your doctor in our network if they're good. So feel free to give us their contact info and we can have a recruiter reach out because we're always looking to recruit great doctors. But one of the most common questions, why can't I just go to my doc? That's why. They have to go through the vetting and the training to understand the uniqueness of that process. Okay? And our providers in our network have already gone through that. Okay. So what do, what do you all have to do to prepare for this? Uh, I would say the main things for me when I come in, we have most of the records. I say most because I just never know what what's there, what is it. So whatever you bring is always helpful. It's never a negative. I've always said to the people that we're training, if I ever bring something in that they think is important, it's, a, it's kind of your duty to at least look at it. You know, I know some people just want to go based on what they see in the computer, but you know, this is your livelihood. This is your record. Nobody knows your body better than you. So if you bring me a piece of information, I want to at least take a look and see how that might affect the case. Um, otherwise, you know, 
honesty is the best policy. I've always talked to a couple of vets who have said to me, if we're talking about a back exam, they'll say, do you want me to stop when it hurts? Or do you want me to, I, to push through? What do you want? And I said, listen, I don't want you to stop because it's gonna, well, it might hurt. But I also don't need you to give me that extra five, 10 degrees that's gonna drop in your knees either. I wanna see the kind of a good daily effect. How do you feel, what's your back like during your work, during the day, during a long day, you know, out grocery shopping with your wife, et cetera? I, I don't want you to think too much of it, I just want you to do the best that you can. And I think that's where sometimes there's a little misconception for at least some of the veterans, oh, it's starting to hurt right here. I, I get that, I get where it hurts. But there's a section in the DBQ that says, here's the range of motion that you gave us. What would it be if, what's your guesstimate, what's your medical opinion, how would it be if he did too much work in life? So I'll be there to, to then compensate that number, change that number, and say, here's how I feel a flare will affect him, or repetitive use will affect him. So for you guys, it's just a matter of just do your, your, your best during these exams. That's, what, that's all I have. Okay, so we talked about this, we reviewed the file. I try to get in the, it's, it's difficult sometimes. I mean, some people have 10,000 file pages. It's hard to go through every piece of the file completely beforehand, but I go through the most I can, especially imaging. Past exams are very important. So we'll go through as much as I can before, and then I'll finish up the rest afterwards. Every now and again, that prompts a question. Sometimes it'll be a quick phone call afterwards. I'll have to, hey, I just saw something that, you know, wasn't quite what we talked about. It'll be, how do I explain this to them? So. That doesn't happen too often. And then we'll have the physical assessment, the assessment that, that's the range of motion testing, heart, lung exam, et cetera. Um, Time-wise, oh, that's, that's a rough one. <laughs> I've had exams that have been as short as 10 minutes, and I actually have one I'm looking at next Thursday, it's probably going to take about six hours. So it just depends on the complaints, the complexity, how many different complaints there are. And for some people, I mean, like I said, heart work's easy. We can discuss that really quick, but when the back leads to the hips, leads to the knees, leads to the, leads to the ankles, that's a little bit more complex of a story that's getting started at a different time. So, again, fingers crossed on that six hours, that night we're going to have lunch together probably. And that's another question that came in on the FAQ, so I'll jump in now. Exactly right. We get questions, well, my exam was only 15 minutes. Well, and then we look at it, and it was a scar worksheet that you, you know, you have the scar, and they look at it, they measure it, it hurts not. That's a very quick exam, for example, where something like diabetes or other things that are going on, as the doctor said, it takes longer. And also, frankly, doctors have been doing this a long time, like Dr. Daphnis, they're quicker because they know the forms, uh, whereas newer providers might take a little longer. They're all vetted and trained the same way, but you know, for all of us, once you've been doing something for a long time, you kind of get more familiar with those forms and everything. So, you can see a slight difference in exam times based on each individual person, how popular they are, what's in their records, and things of that nature. Uh, but don't be alarmed. If you ever have a question about that, please ask the provider while you're there. Um, some of our younger vets, especially, sometimes are afraid to ask questions. The biggest takeaway I have, giveaway I can tell to those folks is please ask the questions. Ask, ask, ask. If, if you forget afterwards, Call us. We have a dedicated call, so we have real people that answer the phone. We have real people on emails. Um, let us know because we want to sort it right then and there, and not have it, you know, wait longer. So please, please, please tell your fellow vets if they have any questions, ask. And Dr. the other one, we get a lot of questions about filming monitors. So you know, yeah, yeah. yeah I, you know, as far as the questions are concerned, I know that's difficult for a lot of people, even in regular medicine. You know, especially guys. Like, <laughs> We're way different. That's why whenever the spouse comes with, I always call it the spouse the truth serum. Um, especially for guys. Nothing's ever wrong with us. It doesn't matter military or not. No, no, I don't want to be here. Um, but, but I always end all my uh, cases with, how did I do? Did I gloss over anything? Anything I forgot or any questions? I just kind of keep doing that to kind of give people the opportunity to think of that question or get rid of that little anxiety that you might have to ask a question. I consider myself a regular person. I know sometimes people walk in and they're like, oh, he's a doctor. I, I just don't see that anymore. I've been doing this for a long enough time that I don't see it, but I forget that I'm either side of the table sometimes people do. So try to make it as easy going as we can. And to go back to that question about the, the time-wise, we don't get to see a lot of veterans twice or three times. We, we lose that kind of really care. But I had one veteran who came in for the SCAR DBQ, and it was a measure of the SCAR from the appendix. Super simple. 
went through the exam, he talked for a little bit, talked about his experiences, he leaves. He comes back a month later with an abdominal PPG. And he says to me, I've been mad at you for a month. I said, well, what, what did I do? And he said, I told you it hurt, and on the SCAR DBQ, you wrote that there was no pain. And I said, yes, the SCAR DBQ asks, is there pain on the SCAR? So when I rubbed on the SCAR, there was no discomfort. On the abdominal DBQ, it says, is there pain when I push? So now we're here for a different DBQ. So sometimes that gets lost in translation. You say, I've been mad at you for over a month now. But I'm glad you got back to me so we can talk about this, and then we had a great conversation about that. So again, we're answering questions. The, the, the difference between private practice and doing these worksheets are specific questions we have to answer that only pertain to one subject versus when you're in the office seeing me as a family practitioner, the whole body matters. Here we're working with specific body parts with certain questions don't translate that. So yeah, after the exam, and here's again where we, we all differ, uh, something else that I forgot being here for nine years, I can do these DQs in my mind, so I can actually think of the questions in my mind. So I do go a little faster than some of the new people who we train and you know I might take them an hour to do the, the reflex DQ. But what happens afterwards is this is where all the information then gets put together. So anything I haven't seen from a file that I might need, old records, maybe something from in the service, maybe something else that I need to create a nexus to say, hey, you had this problem in 1978, here's proof it was still there in 85, and here we are today. That all goes together. There's um, a process of the BPS where there's someone who checks all the work to make sure we did it right, follow the guidelines, make sure I didn't you know, write right on one side, left on the other. I've done that before, you know, it's when you flip everything around. And then once everything is looks well, follows all the guidelines, and we're happy, we'll sign off and we'll get it sent off to the BPS. And everything for us is electronic. Since the beginning, since we started this in 2008, we digitized every DBQ form that the VA has, and that's in our system. So we don't use any paper. Uh, it's it's kind of like if you're going in and booking an, an airline ticket or something, sometimes it won't let you go if you don't click a certain box, and that's to help make sure the providers don't, don't accidentally miss anything. I mean, they are human too. And the goal, of course, is to get a quality, complete, rateable exam back to the VA in a timely fashion. So you all get your benefits faster, and then that opens the door up for treatment faster, and all those good things that come from the DBQ. So all that's digitized, and every, as the doctor said, every single case that comes in, we uh, quality check. We have a team of 500 plus uh, QAs, uh, quality analysts, that go through, and they're trained. It takes months for them to get trained. Um, with our providers to go through and, and check those reports. And the reports are locked, they, they, don't, they can't change anything or anything like that. But if, if the doc says left on one and right on the other, or maybe, you know, they'll send an email and say, Doc, can you check on this? Is this what you meant to say? Because they know what the VA needs that we're able to report. And the doctor will look at it and say, yeah, I meant that, I know you're right, let me, let me fix it. Um, and that way, we have far fewer veterans that have to come back for second exams where the VA kicks back to report or anything like that. Uh, so that really helps get a rateable report to the RBSRs and the VA faster uh, for you all, uh, which is, of course, the goal here. Yeah, nothing worse than wasting time and having things start over for something small like that. So, From an admin side of it, on these 10 takeaways, it's very important to attend your CMP exam. Please, please, please attend your CMP exam. If you can't make it, call us and let us know. We don't want to have to report people as a no-show. That's never good for anyone. And I'm not picking on younger vets. I used to be one, I guess I'm not anymore. But uh, they, I mean, we, we had a vet as a trip, it was like, well, I'm going fishing. Like, let's reschedule that and get you in to do this important exam so you Get your benefits. And every case that comes into us, the first thing we do is attempt to contact the veteran. It's called a day one call. We email and do a phone call to the info that the VA has given us uh, to get the veteran's scheduling availability so we can plug a vet in as close as possible to their home within that time frame. Now, the VA wants us to get these things done in less than three weeks, so we are compressed on time. Uh, that's so sometimes when the vet tells us, well, I'm, I'm out of town for two months or something, then we have to send that back to the VA and then they'll resubmit it two months later, for example. Um, but that's very important. Attend the exam. If you need to reschedule, as I said, call us. 
please make sure the VBA has your current contact information, both the VHA and the VBA. Those systems do not always talk to each other. And the VA, that's a direct quote from the, from the VA. It's not a spear, it's just how the VHA and the VBA work. They, frankly, they never talk to each other in a way because we'll get vets that say they were just at the VA Medical Center. Well, I just gave them my new address. Well, that didn't flow over to the VA regional office, for example. So when you're updating your addresses, keep telling the VA, make sure VHA gets it and VBA. And for those who don't know, I see VHA, the Better Tell Administration, around those hospitals, curing you, you, you know, everybody, treating them, etc. The VBA, the Benefits Administration side, handles the money and the benefits and everything, the home loans and GI bills, and most importantly, what we're talking about today, the C and P process for you all. So they don't always talk to each other. So please, please, please let them know that. Uh, Don already talked about the medical history and submitting the evidence and everything. Uh, multiple appointments, we want to hit on that. Some vets are like, well, I just went to the appointment. If, if you've got a large claim or something from like Agent Orange that's going to trigger an opto exam or other exams, we're going to schedule you with multiple specialists based on what the VA sent in. So, You'll see Dr. Daphnis for the general medical part, but then you might go to an ophthalmologist for the division test, and all that gets packaged together, um, and, and you can see that. Yeah, along with uh, first TBI has to be a neurologist or a physiatrist, et cetera. So, yeah, dental vision, trying to think psychiatry, what else we do? Yeah, dental, audio, ortho, the, the TBIs are all specialists for that, and then of course the gen meds. Now, that's another question we get, that, why aren't I seeing a specialist? Well, for the most part, the VA considers the doctors, MDs, and BOs first, and then specialists second. So, for our contract, any doctor that's qualified can do these, and the VA in 99.5, 8% of the cases does not request a specialist to do those e and forms. So that's why, you know, if it's a scar worksheet, you're not necessarily going to see a dermatologist. In fact, I guarantee you you're not going to see a dermatologist. Uh, you're going to see a gen med provider that's been trained on everything and can go through and do that. And that's the way the VA has the system set up. Now, there are some appeal cases and some others that come in where the VA will ask us if we have a specialist and then we work to find one in our network to get the, uh, the veterans there. But that's a big question. Why aren't I going to see a, a, you know, this kind of specialist? That's not how the VA has the CMP contract is in the process set up. Gen meds are gen meds first. Yeah. And here's where the not treating part comes in, right? If, if it's, I don't, know what, I don't know what a good example is, but if we're talking to a specialist, well, I'm not going to do surgery in the office, so you don't need a specialist. We're just kind of translating one and everything together. As long as your provider knows this is related with the medicine, what gets radiation, chemotherapy, if it's a cancer, for example. But we used to get this question all the time because before we had a brick and mortar in Phoenix, we were renting out a podiatrist's office. So nothing was better than a veteran coming in and what do you use a podiatrist? No, about my heart. I'm like, I'm not a podiatrist. We're just renting out space. <laughs> and so, yeah, I understand that question, but I think it's a matter of understanding that we're not going as deep as a specialist would need to. We're kind of hitting the, the superficial points and making sure we understand how treatment went, where, how you're doing right now, et cetera. Absolutely, and that's another, we get those questions, because we, yes, we try to get the exams as close to the veterans as possible. So we have a network of brick and mortar actual clinics that say yes on them in major cities all around the, the country and a couple of spots in the world, in Guam, and Alabama, some other places. But um, in areas of lower volume, we will, we will go out to smaller communities and rent that, you know, podiatrist's office because maybe they're only using it three days a week, or even some other facilities where we come in and take it over, we have portable exam tables, all that. So we'll actually travel to doctors around. West Texas is a good example. We've got a kind of circuit doctors do. We'll go to, to San Angelo, we got an office right outside the Air Force Base, and we go up to Abilene, Dallas Air Force Base, and over to Midland, Odessa. So Monday one, Tuesday another, Wednesday another. That's how we get closer to the veterans, so you all don't have to travel as much, and we can get things done within that three-week time frame. So just because you go up to a building that looks like a business, and I guess that's a little bit of office, that's okay. Once you get in there, you're going to see the clinic set up and see a provider with all the equipment and everything they need to do 
that exam. And uh, that's very common for us around the country, especially in more rural areas. Uh, the dot touched on already, be truthful and honest when answering. Uh, number nine, get this a lot. Our doctors don't know the status of your claims, and, and we don't either, other than we can tell you when we sent the completed report back to the VA. Uh, you can call us and ask us that any time. We'll be happy to walk you through it. But once we get it back to the VA, it's in the VA's hands. Now, I can tell you the VA is working very hard, and we've seen this over the years. They've gotten much better. They're bringing in more staff, and as they've outsourced the CMPs now, they have more staff to rate them. Their goal is to get it rated as quickly as possible for you all. And the feedback we get from our fellow vets is that, oh, wow, well, yeah, I got a rating in a few weeks usually, and that's a great thing. Once we send it back to the VA, we don't know how long it takes to rate it. We do not control in the money or the rating percentages. That is, by law, that is a VA function there. So call them for those updates. You're welcome to call us to find out when the report was sent. Also, that's, I want a copy of my report. We are not allowed to give a copy of the DMQ directly to the veteran. That is a VA contractual thing, and it's because the VA legally is the custodian of records, is the way they explain it to us. So sometimes that's like, oh, you gotta give me a copy of that. We are prohibited by the VA from doing that. That final copy goes to the VA. Uh, <coughs> law, you're entitled to a copy of it, and our teams get this question a lot, and they've got contacts where they can direct you to get that copy, uh, but you have to get it from the VA. We cannot give you the, like a copy of the report. Um, that's, that's not because we don't want to, that's just in black and white and how they've had that contract now for the last 14 years. Um, now, there are some diagnostic testing that you all do. We can give you copies of that. So you, let's say we sent you in for blood work or an x ray, you want a copy of that to give to your, your doc. Absolutely. Give us a call and, and we can get that to you because that's the diagnostic testing. But the actual Electronic PBQs, we do go to the VA, and then they have to provide you a copy once you ask for it, okay? Um, and we talked about the exam links uh, as well.